Hello again guys, welcome back to another Big Al Devlin video here at the House of Devlin and this particular uh, video is actually following up on the story video that I, I did for you yesterday on um, Viking or Nordic pag paganistic uh, cosmology. Um, if you haven't watched that video already, definitely go watch it because this video is not going to have any real value to you uh, if you haven't already watched it. The easiest way to find it will just go into my playlist look up for Nordic paganism dash the stories and it will be in there and it will probably be called cosmology Nordic paganism cosmology something like that okay um, as I say look in the story section Nordic paganism the stories and then look for cosmology watch that then come back to here if you can't find this video after you've left um, this is in Nordic paganism um, my thoughts so you can see how they're kind of linked okay I give you the stories and then I give you my thoughts and interpretations of those stories afterwards and there's a good reason why I do this because in paganism it's 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 a very unique religion in many respects but in paganism one of the the most important aspects of our religion is that that not that you know the stories or not that you know the same stories as someone else. You may know completely different stories. It doesn't matter. What's important is that whatever story you know or what you, you've heard, that you have understood the story. You've understood the morals, the ethics, the values, essentially, that that story is trying to tell you. And so what I've done is I've separated the two so that you have time. You can watch one video, then you have time to interpret what you've heard and go, OK, well, this must mean that, that means that, and this means this. OK, I have an understanding, and this is obviously how pagans should live their life or what the warnings that the story is trying to tell you or the, the guidance it's trying to give, so on and so forth. And so that's why I've separated it. So I want you to develop with your own mind your individual interpretations of the stories. Now, that might be a little unusual for those of you who have come from Christian or any, any Judaic, Judaic sort of uh, Abrahamic even background um, because really you used to being preached to. You're, being, you're too used to being told this commandment, that commandment. You do this, you do that. If you don't, you go to hell, so on and so forth. Paganism's not like that. Paganism promotes individuality, okay? But at the same time, what I'm trying to say is these are my own individual understandings that I'm going to be presenting to you. Now, as a result, I may be right, I may be wrong. Probably chances are I'm a bit of both, okay? Um, uh, um, but, but ultimately what I want to do is if I bring up a point that you think, oh, hang on, that doesn't sound quite right or... Actually, this is the idea that I had. I, I interpret it like this, a completely different way. Then I want you to put that in the comments section because you'll be teaching me how other people see this, these, these stories. You'll be teaching me the viewpoints of other people. I'll be able to understand other people's minds and perspectives better. It allows me to understand my own race, my, my own, my own of, of humanity, of man. OK, um, to a far greater level, but also as well as that, it allows me to understand my religion better. Um, and if you, your point that you make is valid, well, that'd be great. My point, I, I assure you, will be valid, but probably at least anyway. I hope so. <laughs> I hope I'm not talking a load of dribble. But then you've got two valid points, two valid interpretations potentially of, a, of the same story. And what a, an exciting thing to discover. OK, the mind is a fantastic thing and I don't want to shut your guys minds down like a lot of other religions and faiths do. I want to open it up and I want you to open your own mind up because that is what paganism is about. Once you start opening your mind and your spirit, your consciousness, so to speak, then then it all starts to make sense. And it. If you have you weren't yeah you, know, you you listen to stories and you can't quite work out your own interpretations, then don't worry. Listen to me and take my interpretations on board for the time being until a later date at which you have a deeper understanding of the stories and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Now I've got my own thoughts on it. It might be based on mine, 
um, and just developed and that would be fantastic also or you might just take my teachings away and just keep them as concrete and go well that's how he sees it and he, he knows his stuff so that's the way I'm going to see it but I don't want you to be like that if possible okay um, only if for some reason there's you know there's some points in here for example I mean when we're talking about cosmology there's not a huge amount to discuss it's there aren't actually any sort of morals ethics or values behind the story so to speak um it's just facts essentially um but you can discuss them to some degree and i'll do my best to open it up as much as possible but where we get into the juicy stuff is the things like odd humber and amir and stuff like this and so just before we begin and and talk about the stories that I told you yesterday. I'm just going to recap briefly what I told you about yesterday so you, you remember. It's a sort of a little recap. Um, and also, as well as that, I'll I'll probably be, be pointing out the bits that are, are really juicy and you get your teeth sunk into and sort of go, yeah, there's a lot to talk about there. Okay? So the first thing that I told you about was about co the cosmos. And, and, and the, the order that I gave you these stories is the order in which they happen sequentially, essentially. So if you imagine time, this progressing, as I tell you the stories, time is progressing. Okay, So one does happen after the other, after the other, after the other. So um, there could be some interpretation that you could ask yourself, well, why are men created at the end? And you could discuss that. And that's what the first question we're going to discuss to a, a minor amount, because it's not really a, an important thing to discuss, in, in, in my personal opinion. You may disagree, at which point, please put down why you think uh, men were created last. Um, but we'll we'll get into it. Okay, so the first story that I told you was the cosmology story, which is the birth of the realms, essentially, the birth of the universe itself. Okay, this is where essentially time and fate and all that are starting to be created as the cosmological tree comes into formation, essentially. Yggdrasil, okay, comes into formation as the nine realms themselves form. OK, um, it's during that period that you then also start to see the first gods to appear. And those gods that appear um, are the first of which was Amir, who was a who was a giant okay, of the tribe of giants. OK, following him, you then have um, Buri, Bor, and then eventually Odin, i.e. the Aisha tribe of gods okay um but these were all brought they weren't created by but brought into awareness by or humbler i mean there's a lot to discuss there not so much in the cosmos although you could discuss potentially that what i'll be giving you there is essentially yggdrasil and the idea of what yggdrasil is and how how it interacts with the world today OK, um, but other than that, there's not a lot to much, much to discuss in the cosmos. But when it comes to Autumbla, Emir, Odin, Vili, Ve, so on and so forth, uh, there's a lot to discuss, especially when it comes to the destruction of Emir. OK, there's a lot to discuss there, a lot of morals. And there will be, I'm only human guys, I'll, I, there will be certain things that I will have not noticed myself or I am aware of but I've simply forgotten to bring up and I've forgotten to talk about. And if it was a topic that you were particularly interested in or a, a concept that you think is really important needs discussing, put it in the comment section and roll up the discuss it in the comment section. But also as well as that, if it's, if it's enough of a, of a sort of thing to discuss there's enough substance there we'll create a whole video out of it and have a proper discussion then okay it'd be brilliant that'd be fantastic so if i do make mistakes i don't see them as a bad thing if i make mistakes or i leave things out if i err so to speak it does not matter it doesn't matter because as long as someone picks up on it and brings it up 
and create a new topic out of it, then fantastic. We're actually creating a deeper and further understanding from a mistake. So you can see how a bad thing can lead to, well, potentially, that's not a bad thing, but you know how a, a, a mistake or potentially a bad thing could, could, could sprout out a lot of good things. And that's essentially one element of paganism when it comes to creation and destruction but i'll get into that another time um, i'm going to leave that for another video talking about the wheels of or the cycles of fate time life all that it gets complicated fate is very important in nordic paganism and nordic pagans take it very seriously okay and so i'll be doing a video on it talking about it and giving it the full justice that it deserves but it might be briefly mentioned here in this video at points because there are certain points that i can't talk about without mentioning fate for example it's just the nature of nordic paganism okay and then after the destruction of amir um, the creation of Midgard, obviously, and then, obviously, then, the creation of man. And so the first question we come up to, before we start discussing, discussing in more detail the cosmology story, is, does anyone out there feel that the fact that the creation of man is at the end of, essentially, all of creation aspects of, um, of, of uh, our belief system, does that mean that man is sort of bottom of the pile, you know, bottom of the food, of the, oh, what they call it, with like, uh, I forget, I forget the term, bottom of the food chain, that's it, so, um, so, but, but bottom of the food chain, so to speak, is that the way you see it, or do you see it in a different light, now, obviously, the one and most obvious answer that comes to light is, without all the other stuff, man can't exist, Man cannot exist without land to live off. And that land came from Amir. And for Amir to come, well, you needed creation of the realms and the merging of Muselheim and Niflheim. And so then you've got Cosmos in you at the beginning. So, you know, the fact that men are simply created at the end is simply because we could not have been created at any other point in time. But... Yes, and that is correct. And I think that's really the most obvious answer and probably is the answer. Um, but really, what I would say is, out of everything here, I'm just looking to make sure that I'm, I'm making the correct point. Out of everything within the cosmos creation story, the only thing that is self-aware and self-conscious that is created and not simply discovered is man now that's a better question to ask in my opinion not that we are created last of course we're created last because we can't be created at any other point in time but because we come from a me and a me must be dead and yeah i've already gone through that but what an interesting thought we are the only things created. Everything else is simply discovered and being, uh, and is given consciousness, given awareness, okay, through, through the breath of ecstasy, so to speak. But we are the only things that are created, apart from, of course, um, you know, some of the younger gods, of course, which are, are born, you know, but they're born to things that have been discovered. We are a unique creation, and we are the creation from a combination of Amir and Odin. Our bodies are from the, the stuff of Amir. And our consciousness, our mind, is from Odin. Now we see that the, when consciousness and body essentially come together or mind and body come together, you get a whole. And that's what we get with humans. That's when, when, when man comes into existence. But you also see it later on, earlier, well, in this case, earlier on in the cosm cosmos story. And we'll be talking about that at one point because it shows that Nordic pagans understood that you needed both mind or consciousness, awareness, and the body to be a whole thing 
Without one, the other cannot exist. It's either an inanimate object, the body is an inanimate object without the spirit or the mind within it. Okay, and the, the mind or the spirit of, the, of an individual without a body, well, that that that's going to exist elsewhere. It doesn't exist within Midgard. So, interesting. An interesting point to bring up. And I would like to hear your thoughts on it. Because I've pondered a little bit over it. But as I say, I just simply see it as a sort of um, a reiterance of where you see it before, where conscious and body, consciousness and body come together to create, ultimately, life. Okay? Right, so, as you can see, paganism is a very organic religion. I haven't even got on to talk about the stories themselves, as I've promised you <laughs> yesterday, and giving, giving you my interpretations and it's been 15 minutes. I still haven't even begun. Oh, I'm just about to be going. So you can see how organic the religion is. It's something that makes you want to or it forces you almost to discuss certain points, uh, to bring up certain points, especially when you start looking at it in detail and not taking it simply for face value. When you look at it in more detail, you ask yourself questions and then that Obviously, when you, if you can't come up with the answer, you ask the other people those same questions, and they may not have been asked those questions themselves, and so they think about it, and then they'll talk to you. Well, what do you think? I go, well, I think, okay, and discussion gets created, and the religion becomes deeper, um, or at least the people practicing this religion becomes deeper, because I think the religion is as deep as it's going to be, <laughs> ultimately. If you understand, um, it's already all there, but the people understanding the religion become deeper. The faith in the religion and the faith itself becomes deeper. OK, and over time gets deeper and deeper and, and more meaningful over time. And that's why I mean when I say that paganism is organic in nature, is subject to change to some degree. But its fundamental aspects are what is giving those 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 change you know it's it's, it's followers essentially it's, it's, it's the people who believe in it that that create the change um but within themselves not within the religion so now we get to the cosmos or cosmology as its true term is um cosmology is literally means like basically the creation of the cosmos and like i asked in the first video what is the cosmos well the cosmos I can give you a more definitive answer on now, okay? Um, you may say the universe, and you are very correct in saying that. It's everything around us, essentially. Um, but the 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 Nordic uh, pagans had a very um, described way of, you know, mapping out, essentially, the cosmos, um, and we do to, to, to these days as well, except ours is just, it's, it's exactly the same in many ways. It's just, it's a more detailed version. We look into the night sky and we are able to see with telescopes, planets, meteorites, stars, so on and so forth. All these heavenly bodies that exist within the cosmos, we give them names. And so essentially all we're doing is we're adding detail to minor aspects of the cosmos as a whole because of course we can't see the mass majority of the universe we can only see a very small amount and so we're seeing the bit around us which may be just Midgard itself you could consider what as far as we can see that's the realm of Midgard or you could see Earth as simply as being Midgard but it doesn't really matter you could see the whole universe as being Midgard because the universe is material and of course remember Midgard is the only material realm out of all of the nine realms. The other eight realms are spiritual in nature. Okay, so the fact that the universe has physicality to it, I would suggest that the entire universe is simply Midgard. And <laughs> really is all, all a mere. But obviously, in the stories of the cosmos... You could argue that it's just Earth, and I would I would agree with you. I believe that um, that it is just Earth 
that is Midgard and that the, the, the universe around us, that's the rest of the cosmos. And there are aspects to the cosmos that we simply do not understand, will probably never understand and probably will never see. And that's the aspect ultimately that I'm interested in because that's the spiritual realms. Okay. Now, as I say, the way that the Nordic pagans mapped it out is, is that they mapped it out as what they called Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil simply is the tree of life, okay? You'll see lots of people who probably aren't pagans wearing the symbol of a tree around their neck, for example, especially girls. My girlfriend's got a necklace, but I bought it for her, so she knows exactly what it is. I told her the story of Yggdrasil um, when I bought it her, and she loved the story. Um, she loved it, she thought it was beautiful, and she thought the necklace was beautiful, and she hasn't taken it off ever since I gave it to her, which was quite a while back, uh, probably about six, eight months ago, so she had never taken it off. Um, and, as I say, the tree of life is how Nordic paganisms would draw out the universe, essentially. How would you draw out the universe without... You, you would try to simplify it, right? You can't draw out all the stars because no human has that good a memory, okay? And so the way that the pagans did it is still in some way valid, okay? It's a simplification of perhaps of, of the cosmos as a whole, but it, it tells you everything you need to know. It tells you all the important details that you need to know, and you need to know these places to understand the stories that come later, okay? And so the cosmos... Or the it, or sorry, the, the 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 cosmological tree, or Yggdrasil, or the tree of life, whatever you want to call it, is an invisible tree, because it doesn't exist in many respects. You could say, but it, or it's spiritual in nature, but it's it's an invisible tree-like structure that connects all the realms together, and within the and from that you have nine realms. Okay, and Yggdrasil simply feeds fate into the nine different realms that exist and as the flow of fate goes through the universe or through the cosmos that flow of fate causes time to move and as time moves that causes life to progress from life to death creation to destruction Okay, so and forth, and so you get these cycles being created, and it's Yggdrasil which is at the heart of it all because Yggdrasil allows the fates to flow through it, like water flows through the roots of a tree to the to the leaves. Fate actually flows from the roots or the basin of the tree, essentially of the cosmological tree, right through to the tips of the tree, and then essentially will come back down as dew drops as well, and then it'll be recycled. OK, and so we now can look at the cosmos, as I say, as this tree that is with the nine realms. You've got the three realms at the top, which represent the branches. And these are essentially the heavens. You've got Alfheim, Asgard and um, and Vanenheim. At the, 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 the trunk of the tree, we have Midgard. And on either side of Midgard, uh, we have the, the the two original realms that we discussed in the cosmological um, story, Muselheim and Niflheim. And at the roots of the tree, or essentially the underworlds in some respect, um, you have uh, Helheim itself, which is directly underneath Midgard. And on either side, you have Svartalheim and Jotunheim, Jotunheim, the land of the giants. And as I said in the previous video, I don't know where the other, um, was it six spiritual realms come from, but you know that Muselheim and Niflheim existed at the very beginning. Uh, Midgard was created by Odin, Vili, and Ve, um, and is in itself a material realm. But the other remaining six realms, all of which are spiritual in nature, how are these created? Well, I think they were have to discuss it with my particular my, with my own tutor celtic god um um i we believe that they were probably carved from the parts of muselheim and niflheim they were carved 
or, or, or organically just became these separate realms as uh, as as the, the realms just grew they became dim or distant from their core and they changed in nature as things do when they grow away from uh, essentially that origin point however if there is a more definite answer that you know please give it and i will still pursue um uh, further reading on that particular subject we then get to Old Humbler and Emir. I'm just going to warn you guys, in about five minutes' time, my phone's going to cut me off and put me onto a second video because it's going on long. It's 25 minutes already, and there's a lot more to talk about, and I can't wrap that up in about five to eight minutes. I think it normally cuts me off at 33 minutes. So if it gets cut off, go find part two. This will be part one. Okay, so this is a pre-warning. Okay, right. So, we then get on to Amir and Orhumbla. Okay, now Amir was the first thing created when Musselheim and Niflheim came together, and he was forged essentially, or not forged, but formed um, from the both the fires of Musselheim and the ice of Niflheim. Now, this describes really his duality in nature he's very he, he's the only god that has the ability to create life from nothing he's the only not just god the only creature the only anything able to create life from nothing everything else has to have something to work with or a wife or a lover you know like odin created life with us but he had the body of a mere a body of a god to work with and he then just gave us consciousness as he himself was given consciousness by old humbler and as for of course all the gods he just passed on whatever he was given on to us okay um but um emir was one of those gods um, it, that was, as I say, created from both fire and ice. And it's believed in Nordic paganism that anything created from the fires of Musselheim or anything corrupted by the fires of Musselheim, they can have the ice of Niflheim within them as well, but anything with the fires in them potentially have a destructive nature within them. They have the poten a greater potential for destruction than something made out of pure ice, for example, such as Buri, who was the first of the Aisha tribe, who was made of pure ice. Okay, now when you look at those two, you've got fire and ice and just pure ice. Okay, he essentially is a being of pure creation or a being of purity, but it doesn't mean that he's he is. Um, uh, he, he's less likely to be destructive in nature, but he's still very capable of being destructive in nature. It's just he has a natural inclination for being more creative in nature instead. Okay, um, his actions by default will be creative, um, but he still has that conscious thought to override that natural "I'm going to be creative" sort of feeling inside of him and just destroy everything in front of him okay he had more more than enough power to do things like that and of course we see that really with with odin now odin of course billy and they his two brothers um they these these all these gods they they weren't pure ice they of course were half giant so they did have an element of fire in them and that really is what i might sense gives them their true power okay they are not purely creative beings they have a little bit of destruction in them because of course you need some destruction in a life you can't have all happy happy you know whatever you, you've got you can't have all complete creation because there would be without death and that i mean it's just not going to work. And so there is creation and there's destruction. But as long as destruction is kept in check and to a minimal level, then everything's fine. And essentially, that's what the gods do. During their reign, they try to keep creation and destruction in that kind of balance. Well, imbalance. Their creation is very much in dominance to destruction. But of course, towards the end, when it comes to Ragnarok, where everything is destroyed... 
sorry guys, I just had to pause the video there, but basically what I was saying was the destructive elements, the, the fire within Odin and Villian Vey is really what gives them the strength. And as I say, that in, <laughs> when we get to Ragnarok, we see that, balance changing from creation being dominant to destruction being dominant and that's why we get essentially the end of everything okay um now emir was a hermaphrodite and really this is symbolic or iconic or whatever you want to describe it as um but it's symbolic essentially for him being essentially a purely creative creature in, in in his physicality at least if nothing else um yes he becomes destructive later on but he has the ultimate power of creation he can create life um and it sprouts from him okay but he himself even though he's creating life at this point is completely dormant he is unaware of everything and anything around him and it takes old humbler who's from Niflheim, made of pure ice, um, the bull, the cow, okay, the hermaphrodite bull cow thing, okay, it comes along and feeds Amir and nourishes Amir with its milk, and in doing so, gives Amir that sudden ecstasy that we've described before, that breath of ecstasy, gives him that ecstasy to suddenly become self-aware, and to become what he was bound to become, a, a living, breathing god, so to speak. And, of course, Udhumbla goes along and does the same with all the other gods that are around and about. And so Udhumbla doesn't have the ability to create life, but he has the ability to create consciousness and awareness. And this is where, as I've mentioned before in, in, in the video, where we see, again, the marrying of consciousness or awareness with body, okay, Emir was the body, very powerful, ultimately powerful body, but Udhumbla was the consciousness, and he, when, when the consciousness and the body are combined, you get a life as we know it, okay, and so really that's, for me, what to take away from that in paganism, you need both elements, to live and the fact that i'm living despite having gone through a death block experience is proof that my spirit returned to my body now i've done a previous video on whether my body is possessed by my own spirit but that's another discussion um and, it, and another way of potentially interpreting um some of the, the aspects of our religion but i'm obviously here i'm not a, i'm not a um an undead body a de an animated body with no soul i have i must have a spirit i have consciousness i have awareness so i've got a spirit or i've got awareness or i've got consciousness and i have a body and so i have life and that's proof that i am living and that really helps you then when you do suffer from the waking dream 